we thank you for the privilege to meet with your children today and to communicate your mind as you lay in on our hearts. We say, have your way, thou ancient of days. Take the things that are hidden and make it plain by your spirit. Grant us understanding in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Today we'll continue on what next, the fifth part of it, two parts were on the rapture and three parts on the Antichrist. And you may say, why the Antichrist? Why did we have to keep, take three lessons to deal with the Antichrist? The answer is simple. Listen to this. The Antichrist will rule the world. And the Antichrist is not going to come out from hell. Neither is he going to drop from the second or first heavens. The Antichrist will emerge most likely from the political process. And that means a generation of Christians on earth will elect a man into office. That's what it means, practically speaking. So these things are serious. Why we keep emphasizing Christians in this end time when it's time for things like national election. Don't just grab what others grab. Ask the Lord to do what he wants to do. And if you are there, you are safe. Because when the Lord uses your hand to put in, it's no longer you, it's his. So there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. And in the fullness of time, Certain things will be so manifested. So that's why today we want to look at the Antichrist part three, outcomes of policies and activities of the Antichrist, the coming world ruler. What are the outcomes? Brother sister, remember what we told you repeatedly? The Antichrist will not manifest until the church is taken out of the way in the rapture. That is the biblical order in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, clearly articulated. Then when you now look at other scriptures, it all fits in. And we want you not to be one of those who are lost in the pre, mid, post-tribulation quarrels. Those things are meaningless. What matters is be ever ready. What matters is live your life in such a way that if it comes now or tonight, you make it. And... The things he told us to do, live in obedience. He said, occupy till I come. Be part of that who is occupying until it comes. So what we now do is to examine eight outcomes of the rule of the Antichrist. What is it that his rule will occasion in the air trim? Eight outcomes. Number one, multitudes on earth who refuse to receive the love of Elohim in Yeshua will embrace and worship Satan directly or indirectly through the Antichrist. They will do that either by worshiping the Antichrist as their God or Satan who gave him power. We are told in Revelation chapter, chapter 13, verse 4 to 6 and verse 8. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. The dragon is Satan. The beast is the Antichrist. They worship the dragon who gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell therein. To blaspheme his name. To blaspheme Elohim, blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and the people that dwell therein. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So, he will superintend over the process whereby the mass of humanity that refuse the love of Elohim in Yeshua, they will take Satan worship to another level. But men and brethren, in this regard, let us acknowledge the inconvenient truth that both the throne or office he will occupy and the domain or sphere of influence which he will initially rule over before manifesting to the world would have been programmed to produce what will manifest in due season. In other words, there will be a throne that will be created and ultimately to produce the Antichrist that will sit on it. Remember, a throne is bigger, greater, and more long-lasting than the person who sits on the throne. There are thrones that have lasted for a thousand years and has produced successors. They come, they go. 
They rule for 30 years, they go. They rule for 40 years, they go. 20 years, they go. 10 years, they go. The throne is there, the people there. So in that regard, there will be a throne created in the earth dream that people may not even know what it's for until the day that he who is determined to sit on it manifests and he will sit on a throne with an infrastructure already made for him to use to exercise global dominion. So number two, the purpose, the second outcome of the rule of the Antichrist is to execute satanic judgment against the Hebrews who refused the salvation in Yeshua HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, Yeshua made a very critical statement to Jewish religious leaders. And look at what he said, John 5, 43. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will you receive. So the same Yeshua HaMashiach that was re rejected by Israel, Israel will embrace the Antichrist when he manifests. As you noted in Daniel 9, 27, the Antichrist will start his tenure by making a peace treaty with Israel, which he shall break three and a half years later. He will reveal his true colors when he commits the abomination that makes desolate. And as Hebrews rise to protest, they will be faced with the full measure of his fury. The situation will be worse than the Holocaust of Adolf Hitler. Here is a passage that describes the situation which we shall deal with in another specific lesson on the Great Tribulation. Jeremiah 30 from verse 6 to 7. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travel with child. Jeremiah saw a vision where men carried their hand as if they were heavy with pregnancy. So ask now and see whether a man doth travel with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Israel will have such a squeeze, but the good news is that it will be saved out of it. That salvation is when Yeshua will return from heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That the one that was rejected was the one that will come to save Israel. So even our own king, Yeshua, told us what the great tribulation will look like in Matthew 24, 21. For then shall there be great tribulation, even as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The elect of the Lord spoken about here are those who did not make the rapture. For their sake, the great tribulation is going to be short. The Bible makes it clear it's going to be about three and a half years. 42 months, that's when it will last. And one of the reasons why Satan, you know, we need to understand that the, the, the one of the reasons Satan hates the Hebrews as a people is because it was the bloodline chosen by Elohim for the manifestation of the promise in Genesis 3.15 of the seed of the woman. It was unknown until Abraham that this is the actual lineage. So Satan has tried to pollute it. You know, the other day I was reading Matthew 1 and the Holy Spirit was reminding me something he taught me early as a minister, how the bloodline was polluted, polluted. Everything was done to pollute that bloodline. And the reason was because that's the bloodline that produced the Messiah. Number three outcome of the Antichrist rule is to execute satanic judgment against professing Christians who miss the rapture despite plain provisions of scripture. It is obvious, brothers and sisters, that many saints, many Christians will miss the rapture, which was described in detail in previous lessons. But let's just, for purpose of bringing it home, let's take note of some passages that gives you an idea. The best of all is that 50% of saints may make the rapture, another 50% will not make it. And that is the allegory you can derive from the uh, parable of the virgins, the wise and the foolish virgins. They were all virgins, but half of the ten, five, were ready. They had extra oil that when the sound came that the bridegroom was come, they woke up, put on their wick, there was oil, and they entered with him, the door was shut. Now that talks about the rapture. 
that they are Christians, they are not into an adultery, they are not into fornication, they didn't do any of the external things, no financial crime, but their own issue was they were not watchful and therefore they didn't come to understand that sharpness of spirit of people to live that he may come any moment was lost in them and that's how they miss your rapture. So they were told here that 50 percent are those who will make it to the rapture, potentially 50 percent, but that's not all. In Luke 19, 11 to 27, out of 10 servants who were given gifts by Yeshua, assets with which to go and do kingdom business, to occupy till it returns, only two had a positive report. The first, the second, the third one came and said, you know what, you are no stair man, I hid your money. And he was condemned into utter darkness. Now, the question is, what of the 70? There was nothing reported of them. Can I submit to you that it also describes potentially 70% of believers who may not be sharp in the spirit and therefore may miss the rapture. Then let's go on to another one. In the parable of the sower, so in other words, 70% may miss it, 30% may make it. And in the parable of the sower, in Matthew chapter 13, 1 to 8, just 25% of saints had a right heart to receive the word and produce abundant fruit of transformed lives. Are you not seeing it today? Go to almost any church, holiness church, kingdom church. You still see that the people who are earnest, that their hearts are open, even as we are sharing this word, you see their hearts are open, the word comes, they receive it, they pray it in, and they allow, they ruminate it over the day, it marinates in their heart. It's just about 25%. It has not stopped. So, 25%, 30%, 50 50 be maximum. Check up, brothers and sisters, that a whole load of Christians today will miss it. They will make it. So, Satan is going to execute judgment against them. And brothers and sisters, those people are going to suffer unnecessarily. So number four, to be the Antichrist, to be by default, the instrument of providing saints who miss the rapture, a final opportunity to make a choice of eternity with Yeshua or Satan. So this is what will happen by the economy of the um, the an antichrist system. So people who miss the rapture will be faced with now a dramatic choice. Is either you take the mark of the beast and miss it forever, or you refuse to take the mark of the beast and you have to pay for with blood. So some people have said, oh, nobody will make it after the rapture, the gate of grace is closed. I've repeated this to you repeatedly. Listen, it's not for us to take our pres you know, presumptions and what we want into the world. No, interpret scripture as it is. Scripture is clear that there will be many believers that will make it after the rapture. In many passages, in Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9, and this, after this, I beheld. That's after Israel's remnant were sealed. I beheld. And lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, they stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our Elohim, which is upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped Elohim, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of Elohim, serve him day and night in his temple. He that sit on the throne shall dwell among them, and they shall hunger no more, neither test any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and Elohim shall wipe away their eyes. So there will be people who will make it because they made the choice. Like, okay, I thought I was joking all this while. The rapture has happened. I missed it. Now it doesn't matter what. My head take it. My eyes take it. My arm take it. I will lay hold of that which I have. 
and they will pay the price and they will make it. Revelation 15, 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of Elohim. And Revelation 17, verse 6. We are told I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the, with the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua. And when I saw her wonder with great admiration. Brothers and sisters, Revelation 20 verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was given unto them. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua, for the word of Elohim, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Yeshua a thousand years. So the tribulation saints will also live and reign with Yeshua a thousand years, just as the rapture saints that will come back with Yeshua. So brothers and sisters, why is this why are these things being emphasized the lord says surely some people will be so distracted they will miss the rapture these truths may be the thing that they will remember and so if you're a teacher teach the whole truth don't teach subjectively don't add don't subtract teach the scriptures as it is we don't teach our preferences brothers and sisters this is the reality so but the question then is to this why would any saint be careless now to allow dogma learn from denominations some people have been told well there's no there's no pre-tribulation rapture there's no rapture before the tribulation so why would anybody be careless and what will make you miss the rapture is dogma why not take the scripture as it is first corinthians 15 50 to 58 first corinthians and first Thessalonians chapter 4 13 to 18 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. Why not take these three scriptures in the mouth of two or three witnesses? Every word is established and say, Lord, I don't care when the rapture will happen. I just want to make it. Give me the grace to pay the price. Why not? Why would somebody miss the rapture only to discover you can no longer worship, you can't clap your hand because secret police is everywhere. Cameras are everywhere. They can pick you and even your neighbors will tell on you. Even brothers and sisters will tell on you. Parents will tell on you. Children will tell on you because spirit of antichrist will grip those who are lost and they will hate everything to do with the righteous. And Jeremiah 12, 5 says, if thou hast run with foot men, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusted, they weary thee, how would thou do in the swelling of Jordan? If you are living in Western Europe or America where, you know, there's a culture of Christianity, you can worship, you can do anything, you can take a billboard, you can make whatever statement you want to make about who you are in the Lord, and nobody is going to disturb you, how then can you survive when you have to face the knife? You have to say fire, when they will burn you alive, when they will take a knife and slash off the head, behead. Why would one take that chance? That's why I beseech you, brothers and sisters, I plead with you, make the choice and say, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to allow dogma of denominations to deceive me. I want the Lord by his grace to preserve me from falling. And I give up myself. I make, the, I make the decision to make the right choice, to fall into the grace of Elohim and to give him right away over my life. I will do nothing less. That is the way to make it. Men and brethren, the fifth thing that the Antichrist will be doing is to rule the world which refuse Yeshua. And he will do that with an opposite rod of influence. So brothers and sisters, the Antichrist will be used to show the world the real nature of Satan. In a more manifest way, remember, he will give his seat, his power, and his authority to the Antichrist. So, this person will rule. He will literally trample on the people. He will supervise the great tribulation period in world history. He will enforce the will and plans of Satan over the world, with the world at the apogee of rebellion against Elohim, divine wrath will be poured against humans on the earth who submit to the unrestrained rule of Satan. This is what is called the Great Tribulation. Men and brethren, it is so important that we understand. Yeshua referenced this in Matthew 24, and he told the people from verse 16 to flee for their life if this happens. So there are believers who will be on earth that period, and he told them not just what happened 
in the days of Gerard Titus in AD 70, also in the end of the age, he said, whenever you see the final abomination that makes the soul spoken by prophet Daniel in Matthew 24, 15, he said, flee. So there are people who will be in Israel who are believers who miss the rapture. They will see the abomination of desolation. And Christians across the world on satellite, on cable, is going to be one of the biggest news when the day the Antichrist will enter the temple and say, worship me. And anyone with the spirit of the Lord knows that that's the signal. Now that last three and a half years of the earth realm, we have entered into it. And brothers and sisters, that's why I say, be careful. People will tell you, oh, the Christ is there. I say, don't, don't believe it. They say, no, he's there. Read Matthew 24, 15 to 28, and you will get what, how Yeshua defines this. So the world who refused Yeshua, you know, the Prince of Peace, will get the opposite of Yeshua, the Prince of Crisis. It will be crisis from crisis to crisis, confusion, trouble, and you know, in a future lesson, we'll just give you a snapshot of what the Great Tribulation will look like in practical terms. Number six, he will preside over the ultimate political, economic, and social system that man ever invented with satanic prompting. In that regard, the Antichrist will take the system of mass, or mass control developed by Nimrod in Genesis 10, 8 to 10, to new heights. And the various components of this system have already been tested in various locations by institutions whose origins are shrouded in mystery. Many governments and institutions are already operating from their playbook in ways that seems normal, and they include but are not limited to the following features. What are those features? One is the beast economic system. That's what is going to happen. So this entire system is going to be based on what we call the beast economic system, a structure in which control of the people for the benefit of the Antichrist and Satan is implemented worldwide. As all people on earth will be faced with an option which they can only participate in any aspect by trading their eternal values. So it's either you, you, you're able to do business, get a job, get promoted, able to enter your office, able to participate in the economic system, okay, and it will be based on accepting the mark of the beast, or you are not able at all because you refuse to take the mark or the number or the name, and you are outside the economic system, how long will you hold out? This is a three and a half year project. At any given time, the food you have in your house may be just enough to last you for two months, one month, some people three months or five months or six months. What happens later, you cannot buy, you cannot sell, you can't get a job, you can't get promotion without a mark. And brothers and sisters, these things are being tested on now with a big brother governmental system. It keeps a tab on everything everybody does through hypersensitive security systems. A country in Europe has 47 million cameras watching 63 million people. And you have no idea how many cameras are watching you until you consider all the CCTVs on the road, all the speed cameras, all the CCTVs in banks and institutions, the street cameras and the ones that are there monitoring people. And the need for security is going to occasion people ab adopting this. And then the welfare state. The welfare state, people love it a lot, whereby government, you know, gives people money, cell phone, gives people this, that, that, and people don't work and they just depend on government. What people don't know is that that also leads to government control. Because if government knows you, if government owns you, provides you everything you need, including accommodation and pocket money and all that, a day will come when government will cash its check by telling you what to do, whether you like it or not, and you just do it. Then, of course, the cheap technology. We know things like RFIDs have been developed, but RFIDs are just on this side of eternity. It's things that are tinier than RFID, more critical than RFID, have been developed. Some of them you don't even know. There are people who are scientists and technologists. You know what? They don't participate in the normal lifestyle. Their life is in the laboratory. They've dedicated themselves to solving problems. And what they find out and what they discover, you look at the vaccine, COVID-19 hit. And while other people are doing businesses, some scientists have been in the lab. The only thing they do is to come out to have a grab, eat. And some of them sleep on chairs, solving the problem. 
And if it is so, the development of the ultimate device that will be the you know that will be like taking the chip technology to its ultimate is that which Revelation chapter 13 and 14 speaks about. That will be the mark of the beast that could be projected into people that without it you can buy or sell. So these things are already fixed, kind of. These things are fixed. So it is so important for us to know that we are warned in Revelation 14. This has been said. Look at what the, the false prophet would do in Revelation 13 verse 15. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. These are things that are about to happen. The moment the church is raptured, for the first three and a half years, it will be like stabilizing things. The time will come without a mark. No participation, no job, no promotion. Without a mark, you can enter an office. You've seen it now. That from key, they move into, you know, having something you have to punch code till wearing a lanyard and you have a, a microchip there. You wave it when you get close. The door opens. Now it will be ultimate that instead of having a lanyard to wear your neck, you know what? Why not put it in the ski so there will be no robbery? And these things are all connected. Your blood type, your, your financial records, everything about you. That if somebody had an accident, you know what? The, whether the person can speak or not, just take that thing, put it on a QPR code, a QPR code, everything about the person comes forth. Brothers and sisters, these things are developing before our eyes. So you say, and no man will buy or sell, save he that had a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. Look at that. Very simple. Without it, no, no economic system. And we are told in Revelation 14, 9 to 11, the third angel followed them. Why the Lord repeats this is that at times you need to hear something eight times before it sinks in. Paul said to say the same thing is safe. He said with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Elohim, which is poured out with a mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, who else ever received the mark of his name. So, brothers, this thing cannot be clearer enough. He's saying if the rapture happens and anybody happens to miss it, make sure that no mark comes upon you. So those who are trying to say is this one now, it's not this one. But it's a good dress rehearsal to avoid any human being putting a mark on you by whatever means. You see, today they've developed tattoos, all kinds of things. Just take no mark upon you. And you say, well, is it possible? Yes, today. You see, Christians who have been on Facebook for 10 years, 7 years, they have never carried, built a banner. I believe in Yeshua. He is my savior. He is my king. They've never done it before. But political season, go and check. Come and see. Political season. Believers take a man's image to replace their own image and say, vote this person. Vote that person. Vote that party. And they begin to do all their verbal joust on social media telling us that the, the spirit of antichrist is already at work that thing that makes people have heroes and they they want to show their loyalty to those heroes they carry a man's face they put on their you know t-shirt you know on their t-shirt and they are proud to carry it but they are not proud you know i was reading the memoir of pastor graves and he was talk she was talking about you know, the things she went through and how in order to be able to do morning cry and other things and have her liberty, she left, you know, the opportunities before her to go to village and stayed in a tiny kitchen. Well, when you get those memoirs, you will know that the heroes of faith, truly, Hebrews 11 is real, that they without us 
shall not be made perfect. And as I was reading through, I promised her this week, I was just going to focus on it and, and, and see how to support her through it. Brothers and sisters, we have opportunity now. And if you can serve the Lord now, don't ever think it will be easy for you then. The choices will be too tempting. You have that promotion, all you need is take that mark. You have that opportunity, all you need to take that mark. And many people are going to grab it. What? Well, the Antichrist will end. The day will come and his tenure will end. So number, so that leads me to the last point today. Charlie 7, but it's listed as 8 in the lesson. The Antichrist will lead kings of this world to fulfill Psalm 2 and resist King Yeshua at his second coming. You know, Psalm 2 is a messianic psalm and it mainly speaks mainly about the return of Yeshua. Why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers, you know, that, you know, take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. You know, the kings of the earth will gather to destroy Israel. And that is when he will come. As Antichrist plans his final assault to exterminate the Jews in the seventh year after his manifestation, heaven will respond. The king of the Hebrews will return with all the saints of all the ages who have been decorated at the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 19. King Yeshua and his army will come down and fight the Antichrist and vanquish him and his armies. You know, Enoch, the servant from Adam, had this to say. He saw in the realm of the spirit the end of the age before he was raptured. He was the first man to be raptured in Jude 1 14. And Enoch also, the servant from Adam, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, we are told, These shall make war with the Lamb, that is the Antichrist in his armies, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and they that are with him, those who are going to come with Yeshua HaMashiach, are called and chosen and faithful. Three virtues the Lord is looking for today. Many are called, few are chosen. And out of the few chosen, few are still will remain faithful to the end. Have you not seen people, you and them were friends, you had good relationships, suddenly one day, one day, just a rumor from Satan, they not only leave you, they become enemies. Just like that. No quarrel, nothing. Have you not seen that? Have you not seen people just turn and all that? Brothers and sisters, listen to this. Those who will be faithful to the end is a virtue. Is a quality the Lord is looking for. It is important not just to be a starter, be a finisher. And we're told in 2 Corinthians 2, 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his calling. So the Antichrist has an expiry day. Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war <clears throat> against him that sat on the horse and against the, his army. Verse 20. And the beast was taken and both him and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him which deceived them that received the mark of the beast and then that worshipped his image. These boats were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the throne, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Brothers and sisters, Antichrist being a created being, he has an expiry day. After growing like a green bay tree, a day will come. Yeshua and the armies of the faithful from heaven will vanquish him and his armies at Armageddon and save Israel. So, brothers and sisters, let us take heed to these things. Let's really understand the Lord is not giving us academic treatise. He's simply expounding the scriptures. The very Bible we have in our homes contain these truths. And the Lord is saying, study them. That's why we give you the references so you can study them. By way of assignment, please discuss at least five of these outcomes of the reign of the Antichrist as a war ruler. Two, what new insight have you gained into end time events? So out of the things discussed, can you discuss five of them 
And number two, what new insight have you gained into end time events? Now, please, uh, for those in the master class yesterday, you know, lesson 19, the we didn't copy the assignment, and so it wasn't there. Um, maybe it could be corrected, but if not, take this assignment for lesson 19. Uh, number one, what point really resonated in your heart as something especially significant to note in the lesson? Two, who is the false prophet? Three, what is the principal assignment of the false prophet? So this is for lesson 19. Now, having said that, I'll pray and I'll make an announcement. Father, let your name be glorified. We've released that which you impressed on our heart to release. And thank you for this book is turning out even bigger as we see how you have expanded scripture. I pray that Holy Spirit will cause your people to lay hold of this truth and not to make mistakes, not to justify mistakes. Let these words be sealed in the hearts of your people. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just a short announcement, brothers and sisters. At the last day of this month, Saturday, 31st of October, we're going to have the Global Prayer and Spiritual Cabinet to pray for the month of October. Every month we meet. This is a year of praying like never before. It's the place to stay. In the place of prayer is the place of knowing the will of Father. It's a place of embracing the will. It's a place of praying the will. So we're going to pray on that day. And by the grace of the Lord, I don't know. I want to encourage you. Listen, these things we do, you need to know how we structure. In our local assembly, every nation on earth is covered every week. Every nation by name is covered every week. Every nation the presidents, the prime ministers, the kings or whatever are covered because we're taking prayer very seriously. You know what? 24-7 prayer is going on. And so I want to encourage you to take your part. Then from November 1 to November 7, the remnants across the world will gather to pray for America. Pray for America where you are, your various nations Pray for America like never before. The election is November 3. And so November 1, we start the prayer. Then November 2, 3, and 4, we want 72 people who will take an hour each. We've not got up to that number. And we've not got to that number. Who take an hour each where you are to pray intensively. And by the grace of the Lord, you know what? It's going to cover the election. Our prayer is let the will of Elohim be done. Let the people vote without intimidation and let Elohim choose who he wants to. And there's something the Lord dropped in my spirit that there are outcomes that are not on the ballot. So we're going to pray for that week. And different national cabinets will take different days. USA will take 3rd November, that very day. Teacher Stephanie is reaching out to all of you to pray. And I want to encourage everyone, take your part and the Lord will bless you. America has been a blessing to the world. And it's our time to be a blessing to America. And by the grace of the Lord, this is something we are looking forward to. We look forward to meet with you. And we pray that the Lord will impress on your heart to be what others are doing and to participate. Because we all are one in the Lord. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you.